All right, in this lesson, we're going to talk about pre-compiled headers. Now, pre-compiled headers are simply a way to improve compile time on your projects. For a small sort of project that we've been working on so far, where it's just one or two um, CPP source files, it's not really a big deal. But when you're starting to deal with files like Evil Monkeys or something, where there's all sorts of CPP files that are compiled, pre-compiled headers really come into play and really speed up your project development. Um, and the reason for this when we're using WX widgets is we always have to include this WX.h file. Now this is like a 100 or 200k file that's rather large. And every time it compiles, it takes a significant amount of compile time. And when that has to happen over and over yeah, for and when all that happens, the different CPP files that it's reference insane. it. It's insane. Yeah, that's, um, that's bad. And unfortunately, when we recompile this, every single CPP file recompiles this header file. And when we use pre-compiled headers, basically says, okay, let's take this, compile it once, store it into a database, and all these CPP files simply reference the database, which is a very, very quick process. So if we let, just rebuild this for a second, um, you'll notice that every single file, if you look down here, sprite.cpp, these it's are compiling all... compiling slowly. It's very, very slow. It's unreasonably slow. And at first, it's very hard to see, is it really recompiling wx.h? Well, there is... A, a, a kind of a tip, if you will, that allows you to see what file is actually being recompiled. If we open up wx.h, now it's not recommended to usually edit things like wx.h, but in this case it's just a, a debugging technique. And we'll use a preprocessor definition called pragma, and we'll just say message, and we want it to print out compiling, compiling wx.h. This should only happen once per project. So something like that. If we come back, go ahead and uh, you gotta fix that up a little bit. Your ending quote. Oh yeah, thank you. Uh huh. And if we come back into here, and now if we rebuild the solution, check it out. Compiling wx.x just should only happen once per project. But it's not happening once per project. <laughs> it's happening every Again. single time. So what we're going to do is show you how to convert this project to use precompiled headers. So let's um, stop this build. Now there's two files that we're going to need to create for this. A header file that includes what objects we want to have pre-compiled. Um, in this case we're going to have wx.h as well as wx um, image.h as we used in the last lesson. And we're also going to need a CPP file that it says, okay, this CPP file compiles the actual pre-compiled header file. That's what's going to create the database. So let's go over to the header files folder here and let's add a new item. Let's create a header file and let's call this stdwx. It doesn't really matter the name, it's just kind of a standardized name to use this. So let's create this and under std.wx, stdwx.h, excuse me, we're going to say include. Now, uh, what we've been doing up till now is including wx.h, right? And that's okay, but in this case, what we're going to do is compile wx precompile.h, which is a header file that wx widgets has created for us meant for pre-compiled headers. So it includes the basic things that we need. We'll also include wx image.h because the draw engine in this case uses that as well. So let's save that out. In another source files folder, let's add another item. And this is going to be the stdwx cpp file. So let's open this up. And this file, all it needs to do is include the header file that we just created. So that's stdwx.h. Now the remaining steps that we have are kind of kind of dependent on which IDE you're using. So, I mean, if you're not using .NET, you'll have to kind of look up some reference on how to actually do this. But in this case, what we'll do is go over to the project here, right click and go to properties. And what we're going to do is go to C, C++. And you notice that we have a headers, pre-compiled headers section. And right now, it says not using pre-compiled headers. So what we're going to do is go to the drop down here and say use pre-compiled header. And the pre-compiled header in this case is going to be stdwx.h. And if we press OK to that, what's going to happen if we compile right now is it's going to give all sorts of really weird errors. So if we rebuild the solution, look at this. Unexpected end of file while looking for pre-compiled headers. Kind of an obscure kind of message, but all this means is that no pre-compiled um, headers have actually been created. That database that we looked through hasn't been created yet. We need to go to this file, whatever CPP file is associated with the header file we created, right click on it, go to its properties, and under pre-compiled headers, change this to say create pre-compiled header. And create use pre -ch through file std.x. So if we press OK to that, and then we rebuild the solution, 
check this out. It goes to this, it compiles it. Now, the other thing that I failed to mention is that every single CPP file that you're going to actually have in your in your project, you have to include stdwx.h. After you do that, every single file will know and know to reference that precompiled database. So let's just copy this and go to every single file. Although tedious, if you do this at the beginning of a project and not wait as I'm doing here to the very end, it's really not that much um, not much work and it really isn't much work now. So if you just remember to compile this, to include this before every CPP file you create, everything will just work fine. So let's go to here. And let's include it here as well. And finally, here instead of um, including wx.h, we're going to include stdwx.h. So let's save that out. As you can see, this it still happened every single time. And what we're going to do to make sure this doesn't happen is let's search for our wx.h. And you'll notice that let's see under draw engine we're still including these two files and that's kind of screwing everything up so let's comment these two guys out and let's make sure that nowhere else is it actually being called so now you can see that it's not looking for those whatsoever and a very big difference with speed and look at the speed the yeah. entire com project was compiled in no time at all so if we rebuild the solution just so you guys can see look at that it compiles it once and then all the files simply reference that and that makes it so that well at least for me when I was modifying, say, the draw engine class, it would have to recompile all of the subclasses as well. So, because th the sprite is related to all of these other classes, and then it would recompile the wx.h header file over five or six times, and that was just insane to do tests. So, I hope you guys learned a lot from this. It's definitely very useful when you're dealing with bigger projects. And not only that, but this really is going to bring this uh, VTM to a close. Yes, it is. Where we have taken a look at WX widgets and saw how we could use it for doing GUI creation. Yep. And, uh, and we did talk a little bit about doing things outside of the world of GUIs. Yes, we did. Also. So, uh, with that, that's going to wrap up this VTM. Hope you guys got a lot out of it. Thanks a lot.